pleasant afternoon, everyone. By the way, we will continue with our lecture about energy and chemistry, which is our lecture six. So, last time we had already discussed the different forms of energy, as we had known that it has two main basic types, that is the kinetic and the potential. Then afterwards, this kinetic energy is being subdivided into another forms at the same time with potential energy. And one of it is the heat energy. So one of the importance of heat is its conversion into the forms that we have at home. So how are we going to measure it? We can measure this by means of the known calorimetric measurement. So how could we compute for the calorimetric measurement? We already know that heat, which has, which has a symbol of Q, okay, that is here, no? heat is having a symbol of Q, and at the same time, delta U is known as the internal energy, or sometimes it is being heaven, having a symbol of delta E, okay? So as I have said, this could be computed in the laboratory by means of experimental viewpoint of calorimetry. What is calorimetry, by the way? So calorimetry is a kind of an equipment wherein it has an inner insulation. So if you have this calorimetry, what happened is there is an outside okay, container and an inside container. Okay. So the inside container will be insulated from the outside, wherein because outside container possibility has some effects on the surroundings. So, so in order to control this, we have that so-called inner uh, insulation. And that is a calorimetry. One of the example of calorimetry is the bomb calorimeter. Okay, so as you can see here, here is an example. Okay, as I have said, this is now the inner container. Uh, so that inner container here, this is insulated out. I mean, this is the outside container, and this is the inner container. Uh, so this inner container is insulated outside, meaning this is not affected, the temperature here is not affected on the outside because it is insulated. What I mean by insulated is, it is being, no? This is being uh, not affected by the outside temperature. So there is, if you have the burning sample here, there is the steel bomb here. So you can control this by means of the temperature here could be controlled because the inner one is insulated. There is the thermometer, there is that stirrer, and you could ignite here at a certain pressure. So this is known as a bomb calorimeter. Huh? We're in its volume is constant. So how could we compute this? So heat flows is measured using calorimeters. So your delta Q, okay, Q is heat. Why we, we have V here? Because it is a constant volume. QV is equal to delta E. So your delta E is the internal energy. So your heat is measured approximately equal to the change in internal energy. There is no heat flow here in your bomb calorimeter. What do you mean by heat flow is the flow of heat which could affect from the surrounding to the inner. No, there is no heat flow because as I have said, said this is insulated inside. Nah? So we could, Assume that our system uh, 
will give off heat outside instead of getting heat outside to the system. No, it should be system will give off heat to the outside, to the surroundings. Okay, so that's it. So in the calorimetric measurement, you can also use this formula no? that heat at constant pressure, QP, is equal to the enthalpy change. Okay, so negative heat is measured approximately equal to the change in enthalpy. An example for this is a coffee, no? coffee cup. Diba? In your coffee cup, what happened is especially, why is it it is using styrofoam? Because styrofoam tend to limit the flow of no? heat outside to the coffee inside your styrofoam. So if you have here a simple, this is a simple experiment, no? which is done in laboratory. So this is a styrofoam. Huh? Styrofoam, then another styrofoam, which is inside. Okay, so styrofoam cup insulation. So there is a water surrounding here. And we could measure our temperature by means of thermometer. So there is, later on, what will happen is, there is, a transfer of heat no, from your styrofoam to the outside to the surrounding. So you can say it here that heat is equal to the change in enthalpy. Okay, so let's have an example here. So our example here is sample six a calorimeter is to be used to compare energy content of some fuels. In the calibration of the calorimetry and electrical resistance heater supplies 100 joule of heat. So this will be our, uh, this will be our Q here. And the temperature increase. So this temperature increase is already the change in temperature. What is our change in temperature? If it is given with final and initial, all you have to do is the delta T or the change in temperature is Temperature final minus temperature initial. But here, there is already a given delta T, which is 0.850 degrees centigrade. Okay. So there is a mass given, uh, which is 0.245 grams of particular fuel, which is being burned in the calorimetry. And the temperature increase is 5.23. So calculate the energy density of this fuel, which is the amount of energy liberated per gram of fuel. So first thing that we should do is we will compute for the Q or the heat of the calorimeter. So how are you going to solve that? That is heat is equal to, can you still remember? That is the, the specific heat, okay, multiplied by the change in temperature in calorimeter. So in getting the specific heat of calorimeter, that is have this the have this formula that specific heat of calorimeter is equal to Q over delta T. So give now the values that is 100 joule over 0.85 degrees centigrade. So you have now your specific heat in terms of joule per degree centigrade equal to 118. Let us continue. The next thing that we are going to do is let us look for the heat evolved by the fuel. Okay, so instead of using that change in temperature in the calorimeter, let us look into this temperature 523 uh, 5.23, which is not, which is now the temperature increase by the fuel. Okay, so heat of the calorimeter is, is equal to the specific heat calorimeter multiplied by the change in temperature. Therefore, this could be the equal to, no? this is for the calorimeter. First, the heat of calorimeter is equal to 
given, which is equivalent to the one that we have solved here, 118, that is the specific heat. Because can you still remember, heat is equal to C multiply, multiply by specific by specific heat. No? Heat of calorimeter is equal to the specific heat of calorimeter multiplied by the change in temperature. Therefore, that is equivalent to the one that we have solved, that is 118, that is the specific heat of calorimeter multiplied by the change in temperature, which is 523. Therefore, our heat of calorimeter is equal to 615 joules. We already know that our heat of fuel will be equivalent to the negative heat value of calorimeter. Therefore, it will be equal to negative 615 joules. So that is for example six. Huh? And finally, because what is needed is the energy here, calculate the energy density of the fuel. So energy density is equal to the heat over the mass. Okay, so energy density is equal to the heat of fuel over the mass, but it should be negative. Therefore, you have negative 615 multiplied by negative one, it's positive, okay. Divide by the mass, which is given 0.245 grams. Therefore, the energy that is being emitted is equivalent to 2.51 kilojoule per gram. Okay, so this is now our final answer for the energy density of the fuel. Let us move on to heat enthalpy. Let us now have the enthalpy. So how are we going to compute for the enthalpy? That is the internal energy. This is another formula. Internal energy is equal to the heat Q plus work, okay. Mostly in chemical reaction, if you talk about work, it has always a constant pressure, okay. Therefore, work is equal to negative pressure huh, multiplied by the change in volume. So, substitute this with your W, with your work. Therefore, our internal energy is equal to Q minus P pressure multiplied by change in volume. So if the volume is held constant, what will happen? Of course, your change in volume is equal to zero. This could only be used if and when. This equation five will only be used if and when your volume is constant. Finally, we have the internal energy is equal to heat at constant volume. The QV there is the heat at constant volume. So this equation will tell us if we do the calorimetry, what will happen? We will only be using this if and when it's constant volume. Okay. In that case, whatever heat that we can calculate, that will be equivalent to our change in internal energy. So, how about if it is constant pressure? Okay, so how are we going to derive our formula if it is constant pressure? So the heat flow at constant pressure is known as enthalpy, that is H. Therefore, enthalpy is equal to the internal energy plus pressure multiplied by volume. Okay, so, if our pressure has initial and final, what will happen? Therefore, our change in enthalpy is equal to change in internal energy plus the change in pressure and volume. Okay. So it will be equivalent to pressure, internal energy plus pressure multiplied by change in volume or vice versa, volume multiplied by change in pressure. But if we have a constant pressure, what will happen? Okay, if it is constant pressure, your delta H or enthalpy will be Q minus negative pressure 
volume plus pressure multiply by change in volume is equal to QP or heat at constant pressure. So there are two ways that we can define the heat flow. No? First is of course at constant volume. If it is constant volume, remember that your change in internal energy, it has a change in internal energy kung constant volume. Pero kung constant pressure gani, ang, ang naa is change in enthalpy or delta H. So enthalpy is more useful since constant pressure condition is more common. So in most cases, ang constant pressure is common, not much in constant volume, no? especially in the laboratory because everything is being carried out using beaker. Okay? So it's constant pressure, not constant volume. In most cases, we tend to increase or decrease the volume. So that is for defined heat flow. No? Okay, so in an enthalpy also, it could be having two reactions. The first one is endothermic reaction. What do you mean by endo? Meaning heat is inside. No? Heat is inside. For instance, in the laboratory, if we have a test tube with hydrochloric acid, huh? a test tube, no, a test tube, with, okay, a test tube with hydrochloric acid, we enclase magnesium ribbon. And what will happen is, huh? once our magnesium ribbon huh? reacts with our hydrochloric acid, it will give huh? a bubbles. A rampant bubbles, then afterwards there will be gases outside. It will come out gases outside. What kind of reaction is that? It is exothermic reaction, meaning heat is evolved. How will you know heat is evolved? There is an evolution of gas. Okay. But an example of endothermic is if we have, okay. For instance, a solution, uh, a solution, then we add another solution. You could not feel, you could not see, okay, you could not see bubbles formation, but once you touch the bottom of the test tube, you will feel it's hot, it's warm. And that kind of reaction is endothermic reaction. Yes, we do this in the laboratory. There are extensive laboratory experiments for this, but we could not do it now. Okay, so that is the difference between endothermic and exothermic. And how will you know there will be reaction? Okay, the first one is the example that I have given you. You can see the you can see a formation of gas. There is that so-called heat will go outside of your container, uh, evolution of heat. The second one is your, uh, your reaction will be, it will be warm, that is endothermic. The next one is there will be precipitate. What is, what is meant by precipitate? In most cases, it will start with warm. Uh, then afterwards, later on, you will see there will be a precipitate. We look down. Okay. There is also so four ways that you will know there is a reaction: precipitate, evolution of gas, and na, it will be warm. Okay. So in that way, you will know that your reaction is having its product okay so that is endothermic and exothermic huh? endo meaning heat is inside so the reaction vessel cools okay heat is absorbed so what happened is at your outside no? what does it mean by this energy is added to the system if energy is added to the system what will happen to your kit or queue? 
always remember, if it is endothermic, your Q is positive and your enthalpy is greater than zero, meaning you have a value of your delta H. But if it is exothermic reaction, now the reaction vessel warms, okay? So heat is evolved. Huh? This one, take a look, heat is absorbed. This one is heat is evolved. Huh? So energy is subtracted from the system. Therefore, always remember, if it is exothermic reaction, Q is negative. In most of the problem, it will be stated that endothermic or exothermic. So you will already know, you would already conclude if it is endothermic, Q is positive and delta H is greater than zero. Okay, then if it is exothermic, Q is negative and delta H is less than zero. Bear that in your mind. So here is an enthalpy. Huh? The two reaction is endothermic and exothermic. Take a look in the endothermic. Yeah? So endothermic is heat is absorbed. So what happened? All of the arrows pointed to your system. Yeah? Pointed to your system. So that is endothermic. Therefore, your delta H is greater than zero. For your exothermic reaction, all your arrows pointed out of the system, meaning it is in the surrounding. So in the thermic, your surroundings get cooler. Huh? Here, your surrounding gets warmer. Huh? The heating system of our aircon is an endothermic reaction. Okay. So that is what is meant by enthalpy. Look into uh, the Gribbs that gives free energy, the activation energy for the two reaction. Yeah? So here in the endothermic, take a look. So we have now the reactant here, endothermic. Yeah? It slowly, yeah, it slowly progresses. Yeah? It slowly progresses up, okay. What happened here is it started with reactant at a very low, but your heat rises up. Okay, your delta H product, you have a bigger delta H product. Bali punishes exothermic reaction. So your reactant here, no, rises up. No? Here, your reactant remains at the bottom no? and slowly rises up. Tani here in the exothermic is sudden. Okay, your reactant has this delta H, honey, delta H, and your product has a lower kit. And that is what is meant by exothermic. Therefore, your delta H will be less than zero. In endothermic, your delta H will be greater than zero. Take a look, because your product is greater here compared in the endothermic compared in the exothermic. Let us have these important points about enthalpy. First is enthalpy is an extensive property. Can you still remember extensive property? Intensive and extensive property. Yeah? And the extensive property, meaning for instance, the mass, okay, the density, okay, those are its properties, okay. So delta H for reaction in the forward direction is equal in size, but opposite in size. Yeah? So, but a forward reaction, gani, forward direction, yeah, it will have an opposite sign. So, delta H for the reverse reaction, yeah, it should be opposite in sign. Basta reverse and reaction. Delta H of reaction depends on the state of the product and the state of reactant. So, it will depend on what kind of reactant that will be produced, of course, in the product. As you can see here, it will depend on the type of reactant. So if your reactant will slowly react and rises up, uh, slowly rises up, it is endothermic. But if you are, if your reactant at the moment that you mix it will react speedily, what will happen? Of course, your product will be less. 
here, hinay-hinay, pero dako inyo kada ahead. So, that's it. So, it will, it will depend on the product and the state of reaction. So your face change here will be, for instance, the ice and water here. If you have an ice here with water, what will happen? No? It will, diba? it will from negative, because it's ice, ice lower than zero and temperature, but if it will start to melt, of course, no? melting, melting temperature is zero. So ice is lower than no? the temperature of ice in a form of uh, in a form of solid is lower than zero. So for instance, it's here, it's negative 20 degrees. No? When it starts to melt, of course, it's zero here. No? When it starts to, if you're going to boil it, of course, it will rise up to 100 degrees. Afterwards, matinga na lang kasi imong gipabukal na tubig, kung mabiyaan mo, mahurot na, wala na. It is in a form of steam. Okay. Steam is having a temperature greater than 100. Na? So this is the phase change of water. First in a solid form, then in a liquid, in a gaseous. Okay. So... This is a phase change. Take a look. The heat also will rise up. No? Heat in terms of calorie will rise up. So that is our phase change. Not the phase that we have. No? It has something to do with the changes of, if you talk about phase, meaning the changes of its form from solid, liquid, and to gas. So, let us take now the different definition of terms, okay? What do you mean by heat of fusion and heat of vaporization? Now, if you talk about heat of fusion, it has a formula of delta H, but F-U-S here, meaning that is the heat of fusion. This is the heat required to melt a substance. Now, melt a substance. For instance, a solid ice into liquid water no? okay that is heat of fusion the heat of vaporization the phase change that we have from the starting of our liquid the boiling it boils at 100 degrees centigrade later on no? Malimta ni mo, mawala na. of course because your water is being converted into two gaseous form that is hydrogen gas and oxygen gas Okay, so that is heat of vaporization. How are we going to have the formula that is delta H VAP? That is vaporization. What does it mean by that? That is the enthalpy change for converting liquid to gas. Okay, so we have we have here constant for water, not for water only. So the first Phase change is fusion, then freezing, vaporization, condensation. What is fusion? Fusion is no, what is in its form? It's still in a solid. It's still in an ice. Okay. So kung ice pa na siya, what is our delta H equivalent? Delta H, take a look. No? This is constant again, as I have said. Delta H fusion is 609, uh, 6,009.5. Remember, our unit here is joule per mole. When it will be on the freezing? No? Because we have four phase chains mga tua, sa itanaw, di ba? From solid ice to melting. No? Melting into no? boiling. Boiling into pag vaporize that, which is condensation. Okay. So at zero degrees, our water is having a delta H freeze, no? freeze which is negative 609.5. No? Diba? And fusion of freezing is just the negative side of 
molecular fusion. Then for vaporization, delta H VAP, that is 4 times 4.7 times exponent or raised to the power of 4. And for the delta H condensation, delta H con no, is negative, just negative of your vaporization. Okay, so that is the phase change. So in calculating for phase transformation, we can apply this formula. Delta H is equal to the N. What is N? That is the number of moles and delta H phase change. For water, it's easy because it has constant value. Okay, so let us have here a form, uh, an example. Calculate the enthalpy change when 240 grams of ice melts. So when it melts, what will be our formula? Okay, we already know our delta H fusion of water no? or our ice no? change phase. No? So from ice to no? melting. No? From ice melt uh, from ice to melting. Okay. So we already know that this is now our no? From our table, delta H fusion of water that is still on the ice form that is 609.5 joule per mole. Let us solve for the number of moles of water. Because you have a given here, 240 grams, we can multiply this with the reverse of our uh, molecular mass or molecular weight. What's the molecular weight of our water that is H2O, that's two grams, two moles of water of hydrogen at times one, which is the atomic, no, atomic mass of hydrogen. Then how many atoms of oxygen? One, then atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Okay, so we have here 16 plus two, okay, that is equivalent to 18 or 18.02 in exact. So let us reverse our atomic mass or molecular weight that is in one mole of water is equal to 18 grams of water. So cancel the grams here. What is the number of moles of our water? That is 13.3 moles of water. Finally, let us get for our delta H here, the formula here. That is delta H is number of moles times the phase change. Okay. Our number of moles is 13.3 mole no, of water multiplied by the phase change of fusion. That is 609.5 cancel your mole. Your delta H is equivalent to 8.01 raised to the power of 4 joules. That's example of phase change from ice to its water, no? when ice melts. Okay. So this is now your assignment. Your turn to calculate this. Use this data here now that is in table 9.3. Let us move on to vaporization and electricity production. So how do you think R, no? Electricity is being provided. Of course, we will go back to its source. Okay, we have the hydropower, the hydroelectric power plant, no? How hydro power plant in Iligan, which is the source of our electricity. Okay, as I have said, this is in a form of kinetic energy, no? because that is the flow of the water from the Maria Cristina Falls. And there is a transformation of energy from kinetic energy, the current of the water, where in turbines be, is being in place uh, when the water falls in the Maria Cristina Falls, uh, then this will be absorbed in the turbines, the turbines with dynamo, and converted into chemical energy. Okay. So here, huh? but there is another form in a form of steam generator. This had been used long, long ago. So there, most of their 
travel, especially for uh, trains. Have you seen old films no? where in trains are being run by no? turbines, okay, by steam generator. Okay, so here is that steam generator. Okay, so in the steam generator, of course, we have the steam turbines here. Okay, then there is water here. Huh? There is water here. Can you condenser? Huh? These are the different parts in the steam generator. Okay, so we have the steam. Huh? You have the condenser here. Night turbines can be up. Uh, what happened here is once you on, uh, of course, can he condenser yang e gawas yang he aang tubig na pero in a high temperature in a form of steam. Okay, so what will happen is there will be a generated steam, uh, and steam could power now your different okay. For instance, train like that, Kanasia. So this is the process of uh, the process of steam generate generation. Okay. Pero ang kalisod ani is you will be if init mani mo kinala na yung kai burning fuel, na uh, burning fuel. Nakaron kay lago na, no? So that is why we have fuels before the kind of fuel that, that we are using for steam. Pero kanay steam generator init yung kaisya kay steam good, no? Mas kuan ang iyang, no? Mas powerful ang iyang kuan ang temperature niya taas. Okay, but the fuel that we use, especially ang pinakagwapo is from Australia, katong mga coal. Okay, it's coal, coal. What are coals? They are also fossil fuel. Coals are dead debris of big plants, okay, converted into charcoal. That's coal, okay. Okay, imitate din. Dili ni siya pariyo sa coal na naas ato, kaning uling, no? Dili kayo na siya, init. Pero init ka po na siya. But the coal that is being used for, no, uh, steam generator in industry are coal from Australia or from other countries, not from the Philippines. We don't have that fossil fuel in a form of coal in our countries. So the important element standard electric power plant here, uh, they exploit the large heat of vaporization of water. So this water here will be vaporized in a very high temperature. What happened? This will generate yeah, energy, a big form of energy. So heat uh, heat of reaction, no? So what are heat of reactions? Heat of reactions in chemical. Okay, it's different no? in a chemical reaction. The importance of chemistry, the energy economy arises from the fact that there are enthalpy changes in chemical reactions. And one of the best one here is our methane. So methane CH4, which is in a form of gas, no? plus oxygen. No? This is known as combustion. So what will happen here? You will generate a carbon dioxide in a form of gas and water. No? So this is a kind of a chemical reaction using heat of reactions. No? We could compute also the heat enthalpy here. A, by means of the bond breaking and the bond formation. Basta mo yung bond breaking, what kind of reaction it is, it's always endothermic. But bond formation is always exothermic. So this is a kind of a chemical reaction which will give a product. Huh? And that product is a carbon dioxide in a form of gas and water. Okay. So the overall heat of reaction here, we can summarize it using the so-called thermochemical equation. No? Do not worry because our enthalpy is no? delta H of reaction. We have standard constant for that. No? So 
to summarize this, that will be delta H of, delta H will be equivalent to negative 890.4 kilojoule. What kind of reaction is this? Is it endo or exothermic? Huh? Always remember our delta H will be greater than zero if it is endothermic. Our delta H will be less than zero if it is exothermic. Therefore, this kind of thermochemical equation is an exothermic reaction. So more fuels burned, more heat is released. Always remember, the more fuel is burned, the more heat is released. No? So, no? so if this is a reaction here, let us, no? let us have this balance. This is now our final. If you are going to multiply it by two, all you have to do is your delta H multiply potential by two. If it is multiplied by three here, the whole reaction, multiply also your delta H with three. Now it's, it's consistent. If you are going to multiply your thermochemical equation, no, whatever number you have multiply it, you should have it multiply the same with your delta H or your enthalpy. So that is what is meant by Hess law. What is Hess law? So Hess law is the enthalpy change of any process is independent of the particular way the process is carried out. No? So that is Hess law. Hess law has something to do about heat formation, heat of reaction. No? So this is needed because we tend to look into, if we are going to look into the delta H product and the delta H reaction, it could be computed by means of Hess law. No? So Hess law is a state function. No? These are properties that determine the state of the system, no? regardless of its condition. Okay, so take a look here. Example here is hikers. No? We have hiker one, hiker two. The path of hiker one is the blue one. The path of hiker two is the red one. No? Though they, no? though they have different paths, no? but they will arrive at the same destination. No? Pero different paths here. No? Okay, so this is what is meant by state function here. Regardless of how they achieve it, now how the condition was achieved, still they have the same. Enthalpy. Magpariho the same. Okay, po enthalpy and act. No? So, what are this state function? Example of this state function: internal energy, enthalpy, pressure, volume, temperature. No? Lahi ang distance. Of course, if you compute the distance, this is much smaller compared with this. Pero ang ganito state of state functions, dili na siya ka makapikto. Kanya no man. No? The state system here is determined no, directly regardless of its condition. So what are these? It's internal energy, volume, and temperature. For instance, this temperature, no, when they are at the top, parihura yung temperature. Bahalag dugay siyang abot. Okay. Their temperature, body temperature will still be the same. Okay. So example here, no? sulfur trioxide reacts with water to form sulfuric acid. This one, this reaction, sulfur plus oxygen. No? And it forms sol, no? it major contributor to acid rain. One origin of SO3 or sulfur trioxide is the combustion of sulfur. Can you share? If you talk about combustion, meaning you add it with oxygen, that's combustion which is present in small quantities in coal according to the following equation. That is why as much as possible, we are no longer using coal. Ano man? Kusug siya mu hatag o, no? This one, sulfur trioxide, which is a pollutant in the air, no? So, sulfur plus oxygen, no? 
will be equal to sulfur trioxide. Okay. So given the term of chemical information below, determine the reaction for this reaction. Yeah. Saan na to pagkuha? No? Pagkuha ani sa iya. Okay. So as I have said, our delta H is already constant. Now there is a table for the constant values of delta H depending on by elements or by whole system. Okay. So in order to get it, we have that so-called delta H of reaction. No? So that is test law allows us to calculate enthalpy change from reaction base tabulated by heat of formation of substance. So how are we going to get it? We have here the delta H is equal to the delta H of the product minus the summation. I repeat, summation of summation meaning total. No? Total of the delta H of product minus the delta H of the summation of delta H of reactant. No? So we have coefficients. So can you coefficients that you multiply for not on a chemical equation? So here it is. This is now the table. So it will be open table. No? Open and table. So you should have this photocopied so that you will have direct, no? direct computation in case you need to have this around Largo can out. No? So these are the different thermodynamic. This is the thermodynamic table. These are its different chemicals. No? Here, can you share one yang formula? Maoni and delta H formation. Uh, this is the change in entropy, and this is the entropy. Okay, this change in the entropy and entropy. Uh, so, example, uh, let us have propane uh, in a gaseous form to form by means of combustion. It will form. You get combustion na bata. There are only two products, that is carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so here is the reaction. That is CH3, C3H8 in a gaseous. This is now our propane. If it is combustion, add O2 oxygen, you will form a product, carbon dioxide and water. Your carbon dioxide in a form of Gas and your water in a form of mal of liquid. No? Before coming up, finalizing your no, equation, thermochemical equation, be sure that it should be balanced. Okay, take a look. How to balance it? Our key, no? our key here is only this kani. Pila kabok carbon to low. Kinsa may na carbon ani ah? It's carbon dioxide. So you add T3 here. No? It's only your coefficient mo ay ma-chain. Daily ang kanina ni Adapita. Kanina nga niya before your before your element or before your compound. Okay. So three here. How many hydrogen? You have eight. Kanina niya, kanina O2 nga niya, last na na ninyo siya ibalan. Okay. So how many carbon? Three. No? Add coefficient here. Three. Then how many hydrogen? Eight. So, pila mani two. So, you need to have a coefficient of four to make it eight. So, balance it now. So, take a look. How many carbon? Three times one. So, three. Okay, now. For your oxygen, uh, for your hydrogen, four times two, eight. Una pa niyo i-balance ang oxygen. Take a look. Pila ang oxygen? Three times two here. It is Six. Then the among water, we have four times one, four. So four plus six, ten. Therefore, what number are you going to add here to balance it into ten? We have five. So five times two, we have ten. So the equation now is balanced. So we can proceed to our no, delta H of reaction. The delta H of reaction is equal to or formation is equal to the summation of the delta H of the product minus 
the delta H of the reactant. I take here. So let us have it here. And this is also a reminder if it is in elemental form zero na siya. Huh? Wala na Kanang O2, H2, ana, wala na siya value. Your delta H there is zero. So our product is, di ba kani? So kani siya to unahon. That is the delta, the three moles of the delta H formation of carbon dioxide plus the four moles of the delta H formation of water. Minus, na, that is pila ka mole sa imong product ang imong propane. It's one. Minus niya, minus one mole of delta H formation of your propane. Minus, na, five moles of your oxygen. As I have said, basta elemental form, ganin na siya, it's not in a form of a compound zero. Wala zero na siya. So finally, from the table, let us look for our carbon table. Okay, here, carbon dioxide, okay, delta H, it's negative 393. Then for water H2O, mm -hmm. here, nas obos, that is it. Na, na. Then we have the propane, that is CAC3, propane, propane, propane. Where is that propane? Wala, given yan ni ah. Methane, wala. Ah, okay, sige lang. Naanan, yan ni ah. So, our propane is, no? have now the values, that is three moles of delta H formation of carbon dioxide. So, that's three. Then, what's our, from the table, it's negative 390.5 kilojoule per mole. So, cancel na ni mo ng mole. No? Okay, cancel ang mole. Kilojoule na dilin. Then, can you put four? Then, for your water, you have it in the table. It's negative 285.8. Yeah. Okay. So, our value DI for our propane is negative 103.8 kilojoule per mole. So, cancel of it, this one. Therefore, this is careful with the sign. Three times negative. This is negative. I think. 1,000 kapin, this one is 800 kapin, so negative, negative. This one, negative, followed by negative, it's now positive. So this is negative nishia, then plus this one. Finally, you get a value of delta H formation for propane is equal to negative 2,219.9 kilojoules. Okay, no? for ethanol, okay, for the combustion of ethanol, no? how it is being blended into gasoline. Okay, here it is. No? That is, this is CH2, H5, OH, or CH3, CH3, OH. So organic pack, no? in a form of liquid, that is O2. Then, as I have said, with the combustion, do you have product CH? O2 and H2O. How to balance this? Take a look. Pila ka carbon? Two. Kani one ra, so add two here. Two moles here. Then for hydrogen, pila. No? I add ni mo ni. Five plus one, six. Diba? So here, how many hydrogen? Two only, so add three. Therefore, finally, you complete this balancing of the oxygen. So, 2 times 2, 4 plus 2 times 2, 2 times 2, 4. No? 4, then plus 3, 7. 7, no? 7 ka oxygen yan. Yan yung mam kay 6 sa man. Napabiya kay usangan ni ang oxygen. 7. So, the equation now is balance. Okay. And its delta H formation is given as siya. Negative 1,366.8. Ang pangitaon ni mo is ang ethanol. Diba? Sa so, itong formula, that is delta H of formation is equal to the summation of the delta H in the product minus the delta H in the reactant. So, 
That is delta H is equal to R product kani. Two moles of the delta H of carbon dioxide. Three moles for the delta H formation of water. Minus one mole, we don't know yet the delta H formation of methanol. Uh, ethanol, I mean. Okay. So, as I have said, can is zero nisha. Finally, because we have already the delta H formation of the whole reaction, so give now the no, give now the no, multiply this with this, then multiply with this with this. It's all negative. Re rearranging, you will give the delta H formation of ethanol equivalent to negative. 277.6 kilo joule. Okay, that is for the example for the delta H formation for ethanol uh, using the equation and if it has a given value already of the delta H of the action. Okay, so what are its uses? Okay, for instance, na, welding. Common mm, makaini, na? So in the welding, what happened? Okay. It is a thermite reaction. A cunning welding is a chemical reaction which is known as thermite reaction. Here, how it is being done. No? For instance, aluminum metal and iron oxide. No? It is ferric oxide. It will produce, reaction produces iron metal and aluminum oxide. Here, this is our reaction. Okay, that is aluminum plus uh, iron oxide. You will form aluminum oxide and iron, and it has a delta H formation of negative 850.2 kilojoule. So, if it is, take a look, diba pag building mo matinga your iron will melt no? as liquid. No? So this is, that is why we can join together, diba? We can join together metals using this, no? Okay, mo melt mo siya. Pag melt niya, of course, pwede na mo siya i-combine with other, with the other one, no? Then afterwards, once it will cool off, so man, of course, gahi na siya. And it is already coupled with the one that you connect, okay? And that is welding. So let us move on to the energy and stoichiometry. Okay, so we already know what is the stoichiometry. No, it has something to do with the chemical reaction involving no? involving heat of heat, involving involving substances. Okay, so this is the ability to predict energy consequences of chemical reaction. So I still remember how it is being done. If the given is the mass and you are going to have that into mole, all you have to do is use your conversion. How are you going to convert it? Use your molar mass. Okay, so if it is gram no, to moles, all you have to do is multiply it with the, the no, atomic mass that is in terms of gram per mole. So cancel or irreverse the mole over gram. Cancel and gram and the billion is mole. Depending on the act. But if you will be using the molarity, can you see what is meant by molarity in the concentration? Molarity is equal to the moles of solute over the liter of solution. Here. That's it. How are you going to convert it if it has a given volume, no? you have your mass, you come up with moles. And after that, it is now in terms of moles. You can use this because di man ta makagamit in terms of grams. If it is using a balanced equation, it should be in terms of moles. No? So once it is balanced, use this balanced equation in the thermochemical equation and you can have your energy release or absorb okay so these are the steps 
in the conversion of energy from stoichiometry to energy. Okay. Example, engine generates 15.7 grams of nitric oxide. Huh? So this is nitric oxide okay, in the laboratory. So how much heat was absorbed in producing nitrous oxide? How much heat? Okay, this is our nitrous oxide. Huh? So it has already a given delta H of reaction, which is 180.5 kilojoule. So our solution is given a nitric oxide. Huh? Nitric oxide, that is 15.7 grams of nitric oxide. Okay. Huh? And let us get the atomic mass or molecular weight of NO, which is 30, 30 grams per mole. So, in reverse nimo or makuha nimo ang mole, therefore, that is equivalent to multiply it with the given mass of the nitric oxide, okay, and the atomic molecular weight of your nitric oxide, reverse nimo, to cancel the grams and the dilin is mole. So, we have point. 523 mole of nitrous oxide or nitric oxide, then uh, it has a given look into a given delta H, which is 180.5 joule to convert this nitrogen oxide to ni nitric ox oxygen. Uh, nitrogen plus oxygen to convert that into nitric oxide. Use that delta H, therefore 0.523 mole uh, multiplied by 180.5. Uh, how many moles of oxygen nit nitric oxide here? Two. So, and still here your mole, you have now kilotonad. For this conversion, is 47.2 kilojoule for the nitric oxide, okay? So what is the relationship of energy, density, and fuels? So, actually, this is very important because fuel is very important in our economy, yeah? like mirrors. So what are the factors that affect our use of fuel? First, of course, is the availability of extracting it. Okay. It's only in the Middle East. No? They have all ang pag-extract ni mo no? underneath sa ato kay magpapganita o something underneath our soil. What will come out is water. No? But for OPEC, that is, what's OPEC? Oil, Petroleum Exporting Countries. Saudi Arabia, Dubai, manong dato na sila because pag bagdak nila, no, underneath their soil, once it will be extracted ang mugawas is oil, it's fuel, no, na isa ato, ato pagawas tobig, ilang pagawas kwarta, no, okay, so these are the factors that has something to do with economic merits of the fuel. Mogani. Rich countries, if you have the fuel, you will, no, Panila, no, my politicians, if or if you have the fuel, if you have the fuel, you will rule the world. Why? No, everything no, in our country and everything that we do is being run by fuel, run by gasoline, run by diesel. Diba? Oh. So our electric power plant, kana siya, ilang na siya. Pero along the way, no, magdagana tong automobile. Pagpadagan po na nilang electric power plant, kinhalan po ng fuel, ang gasoline, kinhalan po na nila. Magdagana tong automobile, it needs fuel. Okay. And at the same time, magluto ta, it needs fuel. But in a form of, it might be in a form of butane, okay, or methane, but still that's fuel. No? That is why countries which has fuel, 
a rich country and they rule the world. Yeah? Okay, they are the one who could say, "Oh, the one barrel will cost this much." Sila na di makabuot, no? Dili ta makaingon mahal ang usa ka barrel ninyo nga oil, no? Because they rule the world, no? Okay, so time will come that will be ayo lang sa kwad, no? In that way, if that will be that is na non renewable mo na siya sa mga fuel. We will go back to renewable in case that will be exhausted. Mm, yeah? So availability of extracting it, the amount of pollution, this is what we are going to look into. Yes, we need fuel, but let us look also to its effect. Yeah? To its effect. Yeah? Second is the amount of pollution release. Yes, the fumes that is being exhausted by our automobiles are the one that will pollute our ozone layer. Yeah? Then relative safety. That is why in our gasoline, there is leaded and unleaded. Okay. So leaded meaning, gidungagan siya, lead niya naman. Aron smooth ang koan. Unleaded is what I lead. Okay. Kung walay dungag na unleaded, na leaded, leaded meaning less, Mas mahal siya, pero less ang fumes na igawas niya o less ang lead sa fuel na tendency na agi siya lead. Na? Lead na. And that lead is not good for our heart, not good for human beings. Why? Because lead, stain, na? lead has, this will disrupt in our system. More react mang siya sa oxygen. Na? So oxygen, it's the oxygen that re, that travels. No? Oxygen with the blood no? is the one that needs to circulate in our system. Agoy kanigong lead mo react, mo, mo, what do you call this? Mo combine siya sa oxygen. Kung naan na sa system ato ang lead, what will happen is mo uban siya sa oxygen and it will mo hawa na siya sa oxygen pag transport niya na sa ating system. Mawawa siya nga to siya mo accumulate sa major organs na kidney na. Like that. That is what is meant by relative safety. Then, the ease of transportation. Most of the fuel is being transported by means of ship. No? Ship, the, cook, the tanker. Importante that this tanker should not emit oil spill or else ato na pagdagat. No? So that is what is meant by energy density and fuel. So transportation is cost is, is dictated by mass being transported. Hence, energy density is a key feature of the fuel. So mao ni ang mga energy density na kinahanglan that should be looked into our government. No? Though it is needed in the economy, Kinahanglan, they should be looked into it. Yeah? Always remember the end justifies it. The end justifies the means. Okay. We need it, but be sure that we should comply with all its uh, safety precaution. Okay. So these are energy density and fuel. Yeah? Energy density values. No? So energy density is the amount of energy that can be released per gram of fuel being burned. Asay pinakadako, tanawa. No? We burn ni siya, asay dako na energy density, which will fill pollute our system. Okay, kalo. No? Kaning hydrogen. Okay na may hydrogen, kaya dilip man niya siya pollutant. No? Kaning, no? kaning the rest, no? maunay peligro. No? Especially if it is, ang coal is 31.4, dili kayo. Kaning crude oil, the petroleum, it's 41. No? Ang dako is, kaning mga, mga fuel, kaginahanglan for automobiles, like that, kaning siya ang dako. So, as much as possible, we should minimize this. No? May na lang karon kay mga tao dili kayo hinglakaw no okay so minimize pod ang transportation okay 
So that ends our part two. No? I hope that you will you have enjoyed our lecture, which is very important in the economy also. Thank you and good afternoon.